Donald Trump has been called many things since becoming U.S. president. For some, his perceived undermining of American democracy and its institutions is a warning sign. It's time to expose the crooked media deceptions. And yes, by the way, they are trying to take away our history and our heritage. You see that. Timothy Snyder is among those with concerns. The Yale University historian is an expert on the rise of fascism, communism, and the Second World War, a time when democracy declined dramatically. Today, Snyder is using that history as a warning sign and offering practical advice on how to uphold democracy in contemporary times. He's written a book called On Tyranny, outlining 20 lessons on what to watch for, such as number 17, listen for dangerous words, or number 10, believe in truth, or number two, defend institutions. It's all kind of a guidebook for citizens today on how to uphold institutions of democracy. We'll get into more of those in our conversation. I met up with Timothy Snyder at the Royal Ontario Museum ahead of his lecture on the rise of modern tyranny. Tim, this book on tyranny is almost like a clarion call for citizens. Mm -hmm. A big warning, democracies can fail and return to a tyrannical past. Yeah, so I try to put it in this form where we can get the wisdom of the 20th century and get out ahead of what's coming to us in America. Are you suggesting that Trump's America is a threat to democracy? Oh, well, ab absolutely. I mean, th this is the first president who during his campaign said he, he might not respect the outcome. This is the first president who during his campaign openly urged his followers to commit acts of violence against political opponents. Um, democracy is good luck plus a whole lot of hard work. And the point of the book is that we have to do that work now. If we just coast, it can slip away. It usually does. I think a lot of people would think in North America that democracy is unassailable. Mm -hmm. We've had it for so long, nothing can tear it down. Are we wrong? Yes, absolutely, absolutely wrong. I mean, if we look at the 20th century, which is the subject of the book, most democracies also fall. If we look at the 21st century, democracies continue to fail. Often while holding elections, democracies become ever more authoritarian. And yes, if you're a Canadian looking with a cool, clear eye at the United States, the trends are in the wrong direction. But standing here in Canada, comfortably, we have multi-party system, we think it's pretty robust, and we have free and fair elections. So a lot of people wouldn't see the danger. Well, first of all, the danger is always in us. Democracy is a kind of political insurance against ourselves, so it's important not to be complacent. If I were Canadian, which obviously I'm not, I would be looking down at the U.S. now and saying, hmm, why is it that some states in the U.S. have already basically shifted to a one-party system? Or, hmm, what's wrong with the American financing of elections? Or, hmm, is it a problem when major politicians have money stuck offshore? I would be looking now at the United States as a lesson, because if it can happen in the U.S., and it is happening in the U.S., then I would say everyone is, would you right, be on guard. Another thing which is authoritarian about us, and which I think you all should watch out for, is the political fiction. People are losing the ability to distinguish between what's true and what they want to hear. But I hear mm. people saying that, Tim, yeah. saying they're so yeah. confused, they don't believe anyone anymore, so they're not yeah. taking part. Yeah. That's what 21st century authoritarianism looks like. What authoritarians do is they say, look, there's no truth at all. Sure, you don't trust me, but don't trust them or them or Certainly them not or the them. Media. Right, don't trust the media, don't trust anybody. And so just stay on your couch, basically. Just do nothing. Affect a pose of cynicism. Be equally skeptical about everything. But if you're equally skeptical about everything, you're also equally powerless about everything. And that's how these systems work. And that's why this is so dangerous. You talk about uh, patriotism and nationalism. Mm -hmm. Different, obviously. But you say they are being confused and that's dangerous. Why? Well, n nationalism is one thing which can keep you in, on your couch. And a nationalist today says something like, the nation is wonderful exactly the way it is. We're the greatest nation on earth. Or as a patriot will say, uh, I love this country. I, I love it because it's it's free or it's just, but that means we have standards of freedom or justice that we have to live up to, we have to do things, we have to improve ourselves all the time. So nationalism is easy. 
and patriotism is hard. When it comes to Mr. Trump, it's very hard, I have to say, for me to imagine that he has any scope but broader. make America great again, that's yeah. I'm a patriot. No, make America great again is I'm going to pretend to do something for you by reminding you of a past um, and then doing nothing for you whatsoever. Perfect segue to a couple of the lessons. We don't have mm. time for all 20, but I want to pick out a couple. Lesson number four is about symbols, why they're so important. You say they are the face of what we believe and we need to guard them carefully. What do you mean? Yeah, this is something that comes from 1933 in Germany. One of the things that scholars now understand about Hitler's rise to power is that the face of the world, the swastikas or the stars of David marking Jewish stores, that these things are very important, that we, we pick these things up subliminally and they teach us what's possible, they teach us what's acceptable. So we know that's true, which means that A, it's very important for us not to let those swastikas stay on walls. In the US there are just now more swastikas than there used to be and there are also more people taking them down, which is very important. Okay, lesson number 10, uh, we've talked about believe in truth, but I love this, what you wrote about the biggest wallet pays for the most blinding light. Mm -hmm. Are we being blinded? Yeah, so truth is self-defense. If truth is out there, that means that anybody, they don't have to have a television channel, anybody can say, look, that's a fact. But once we say there are no facts, then it's all emotion, it's all what feels right to me. Then what we do is we're seeding the field to the people who are good at making things feel right to us, and that's called, that's called spectacle. And yes, spectacle is winning. The President of the United States has one qualification, which is that he played a rich businessman on a television show. He has no other qualification. That's spectacle, that's fiction. How much danger do you think we collectively are in? I mean, mm -hmm. standing here in Canada, we don't feel that kind of threat. How urgently do we need to pay attention to the lessons in here and actually act them out? I don't mean to sound fatalistic about this, but I do think that we're in a moment like, say, 45 to 1945 to 1950 in Europe, or like 1989 to 1995 in Europe. We're in a moment where things are changing. Where, where th things are definitely in motion, which means that what we do as citizens counts for more rather than counts for, for less. So, I mean, I, I don't think the Canadian attitude can possibly be, this is a spectator sport, let's count how many authoritarian regimes turn up and how many you know, dem democratic regimes stay democratic. If you treat it as a spectator sport, then you lose because eventually the teams on the field rush the stands. Thank you very much. My pleasure.